Last week, I showed you how to optimize the performance of a Ryzen CPU, and we also got a little overclock on it. But this week, I'm gonna show you how to undervolt it and get better performance while using a lot less power and lower temperatures. Stay tuned. Last week, I asked you if you wanted to see a video on undervolting. Unfortunately, I have no idea what your response was because these videos are filmed in advance and I decided to do this video anyway. So hopefully, someone wants to see it. What I'm gonna show you how to do today is to get your Ryzen processor to run at its top boost speed all the time and use less power and heat to do it by undervolting it. So rather than giving your Ryzen an environment in which it can stay at its boost speed for longer like we did last week, we're just gonna set it and forget it and use less resources to do it. But first, I gotta pay some bills, so check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. So yeah, last week we used Precision Boost Overdrive to relax the data that the processor uses to control its boost algorithm. And we also gave it a little 200 megahertz overclock. However, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think it ever reached 200 megahertz over its max boost clock. I think it just added 200 megahertz to whatever boost clock it was going to run and not even hit its maximum clock of 4.4 gigahertz anyway, because during my testing, it never even hit 4.4 gigahertz. So today, we're gonna use the same program, Ryzen Master, and not only make sure that the processor hits its boost clock by essentially setting it there, but we're going to play around with the voltages to see if we can achieve that clock speed while using less power and producing less heat. So, let's jump on the computer here and let's see how far we can push this thing. Okay, so here we are in Windows 10, and this is the same OS that we had for Precision Boost Overdrive last week. We're just gonna be doing something a little bit different with Ryzen Master. And to do that first, we're gonna have to start Ryzen Master. So I'm gonna fire Ryzen Master up here, say yes to the user account control, and then you're gonna also have to say yes to this warning that comes up at the beginning right here. Go ahead and hit OK, and here's Ryzen Master. Now, if you're still using the auto overclocking or the Precision Boost Overdrive, you're gonna have to turn that off now because essentially we're gonna be going and we're gonna be doing a manual overclock now. And so when you first launch the program, it's gonna launch in this screen right here that has all your gauges and stuff on it. So regardless of which mode you go into, I'm just gonna do all this from Profile One, but you can use any of these. The Creator Mode and Game Mode are actually mostly meant for Threadripper processors, so it's, you can do it in any of these modes and it's not gonna make any difference. It's gonna essentially be exactly the same. But we're gonna go to profile one since that's the way we did it last week. Now, like I said, if you followed last week's video and you decide you don't wanna use Precision Boost Overdrive and you wanna jump over to the manual settings, then you're gonna to have to restart your computer to turn off Precision Boost Overdrive. But if you haven't done this and this is the first time you're playing around with Ryzen Master, then you shouldn't have to do that. You should be able to just to flip to manual and then just start playing with settings like we're gonna do right now. So. Once you get all that sorted and you're sitting here, so here's where it gives you the opportunity to overclock each core individually. So you can actually overclock your cores separately from each other. However, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and leave these all straight, just like this. And then we're gonna click this little button right here on the right hand side. And what that button does is it locks all the cores together so they can be moved at the same time. And then what we wanna do is, I know that my processor is a Ryzen 5 5600. So that one has a an advertised boost speed of 4.4 gigahertz. Now the normal clock speed is typically 3.5 gigahertz, like where it is right now. So to move it up to 4.4, all we gotta do is just grab this and slide it over until it says 4.4 right over there at the left hand side. 
and then we're almost there. We are right there. Okay, so as you can see right here on the side, it says 4,400 megahertz or 4.4 gigahertz. Now this should work perfect because our voltage right now is stock. So to test it, we're gonna go ahead and hit apply and test and it'll go through and it'll do a stress test. And while we're doing this, we can look at our CPU power and our temperature. Right now our CPU power is sitting over 90 watts. So we're running 91 watts right now and we're running at right around 80 C. So it's, it's just below 80 C. It looks like it's creeping up right there. It'll probably go over 80, oh, there it is, 80 C, okay. So as you can see, we're running 91 watts and 80 C on temperature while it's going through the stress test. So we're gonna go ahead and let it finish the stress test and we're gonna start playing around with our voltage and see if we can get these numbers down. All right, so it successfully went through that. So what you wanna do is when you're at your stock voltage, you can probably jump it down a couple to start out with, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna jump it down twice to 1.225. And then once you jump it down, you just do it by hitting these little arrows up or down, and then jump it down a couple of times and then hit apply and test again. And then it'll go through the process of testing it with the new voltage. And as you can see, we've already lost a little bit of wattage, so we're actually one watt lower than we were before. And our temperature is pretty close to where it was before. It looks like we've we've gained one Celsius, which, you know, that's one Celsius, but it is climbing a little bit too, so it might actually get over 80. But as you can see, our, our wattage is stable at 90, so we went from 91 watts to 90, but we only dropped the voltage down barely a few milliwatts. So now that that succeeded, we can go ahead and drop this down a couple more notches. So now we're gonna go to 1.2125, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit apply and test again. And then it's gonna go through and do a stress test again. Now, as we're doing this now, you can see the wattage is definitely being affected. Now we're sitting at 88 watts, which is a few more watts that we lost since the last time. And our temperature is starting to get better. We're sitting at 77 now. So the voltage that we've taken off of it so far has already given us some pretty good improvements so far, but I think we can do better. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the stress test run through and we'll drop the voltage down a little bit more. So at some point, you're probably going to start getting really low on your voltage and you're gonna to wanna to start clicking them down in less increments than two at a time like I've been doing here. But I'm gonna go ahead and do two anyway. We're gonna try 1.2 volts. We're gonna go ahead and hit apply and test and go ahead and test it again and then keep it in and then keep in mind, you wanna keep an eye on your wattage and your temperature because ultimately, that's what we're doing this for. So right now we're sitting at 86 watts, so we've definitely lost a considerable amount of wattage and our temperature's looking pretty good at 76 C. So it's gonna take just a minute here to finish up and then once it finishes up, we'll go ahead and drop the voltage once again. So essentially, this is the whole game here, is we're just gonna go ahead and drop the voltage a little bit and then test it. Then drop it a little bit more and then test it. And our goal is, is to continue to do that until it doesn't pass the test anymore. And let's go ahead and drop a little bit more and see how far we can go. Okay, so we're at 1.2 right now, so we're gonna drop it again. To, we're gonna go ahead and two slots again. So we're now we're gonna be 1.1875, and we're gonna go ahead and hit apply and test again and see how it runs. And as you can see, we're sitting here at 83, almost 84 watts, and we're at around 75 C. So we've so far lost about 5 C of temperature, which is pretty good, and we've almost lost 10 watts of power. Well, not quite, but we're getting really close to that. Hopefully we'll get this thing under 80 watts. Getting it into the 60s or 70s would be really nice, but we'll see what we can do. And it passed that one, so we're gonna go ahead and drop this again. I'm gonna go ahead and go two notches again, just like I did before. And we're gonna be at 1.175 now, and we're gonna go ahead and hit apply and test. And now we're sitting at right at 80 watts. So we have successfully now killed 10 watts of power that our CPU was using. And we're sitting at 72C. So we're almost 10 Celsius down from our original, well, eight Celsius. And it's just gonna take a minute more for this to test right here. And the test is gonna be essentially the most time that you're gonna waste is waiting for these tests to run, but it's a good thing to wait them out. All right, so we're at, now we're at 1.175, so we're gonna drop it down again. We're gonna go to 1.1625, then we're gonna go ahead and hit apply test again. And our wattage is, yeah, we're in the 70s now, just barely in the 70s. Look, yeah, it's tipping into the tipping into the 80s a little bit, but we're doing really good. We started out at 91, remember that. And then our temperature is sitting at 72C, and we started out at 80 there, so we've lost a considerable amount of temperature and a considerable amount of wattage as well. But we still have a lot more to go because 
our test is still running good. So I'm sure we can take quite a bit more voltage off of this thing. And here we go again. We're going to go ahead and drop it two more notches. We're at 1.15 now. And uh, we're going to go ahead and hit apply and test. And now we're sitting well in the 70s. We're at 77.9, 77.8, right around there. And we're at 71, 70. Okay, so our temperatures actually are doing really good. We have officially lost 10 Celsius on our temperature and our CPU power, we're well over. We're at 13 watts that we've so far dropped off of our CPU power. Actually, 14 watts, yeah, because we started at 91. So yeah, we're doing really good on wattage. Okay, it passed that one, so now we're gonna drop it down again. And now at this point, the further down you go, at some point you're gonna wanna start going down one click instead of two clicks. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna do one click. So I'm gonna go 1.14375, and we're gonna go ahead and hit apply and test. And now you can always go down one click every time if you want, or you can go down two clicks every time if you want. Eventually it's going to fail, and once it fails the test, then you have to essentially bring the voltage back up in order to get it stable again. And I'll go ahead and get this thing into failure so I can show you what to do to get it back into stability again. All right, so we're gonna drop this down now. We're gonna go to 1.1375, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit apply and test again. And now as you can see, we're down to 75 watts and we're down to 70 Celsius, and it looks like it's dropping even more. Yep, 69, we're, so we're into the 60s now in the temperature. Well, we're just barely, we're, we're dancing right on 70 C. But 75 watts is pretty good, especially since we started at 91. And once this finishes, we'll go ahead and drop it down one more time and we'll see if we get any benefit from it. All right, so right now we're at 1.1375. Now in my testing, this is essentially where I flatlined. I couldn't go below this, but Today's a new day, let's see if we can do it now. So I'm gonna drop it down to 1.13125 and we're gonna go ahead and hit apply and test and we're gonna see what happens. So as we're going, so now you can see we are under 75 watts. Oh, and there we go, it failed the test. So that's essentially what happens. So it says right here, this profile was not a stable profile. So when that happens, you can go ahead and hit okay. You can drop it up one, go ahead and hit apply. And at that point, you can be done. Unless, of course, you want to get greedy. And there is a way to get greedy. Let me show you what else you can do to bring that voltage down even more. Let's do it. Okay, so as you can see right now at 1.1375 volts is the lowest that the core voltage can go at 4.4 gigahertz. But who's saying we have to stay at 4.4 gigahertz? Remember, the stock speed of this processor is 3.5 and the boost clock is 4.4. So we can still get a benefit to performance by actually dropping the clock down a little bit and maybe getting a little bit more voltage. So to do that, what we do is you just go ahead and grab this and you just drag it down. And I'm gonna drag this down to 4.2. So that'll give us a 4.2 gigahertz all the time overclock. So essentially it's actually gonna be an overclock over the stock clock but it's gonna be a couple hundred megahertz below what the boost clock would be. And then for that, we're gonna go ahead and drop this voltage down. I'm gonna go ahead and do two notches now and go to 1.125, and we're gonna go ahead and hit apply and test. And now at this point, once the test starts, you can see that we've actually lost a lot of wattage now. We're sitting at the high 60s, so around 67 watts, and our temperatures are in the 60s too. We're at 66 Celsius. Considering we started our temperature at 80 and our wattage at 91, this is a huge benefit right here so far. So, so far the test looks like it's doing pretty good. So it's just gonna take a second and we'll be able to drop that voltage down a little bit more and see how far we can get it down. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go two notches again to 1.1125. And we're gonna go ahead and hit apply and test. And now at this point, we're sitting at right in the high 60s in wattage, 68 watts and 66 C in temperature. Doesn't seem like we dropped down a whole bunch in our wattage that time, but we are dropping down pretty low in our core voltage. We're at 1.1125. So that's, that's pretty low based on what the start voltage was, which was 1.2375. So right now we're over 100 millivolts under what our stock core voltage was. So now we're gonna go ahead and drop this down again. I'm gonna go ahead and go two notches again to 1.1 volts. And we're gonna get, go ahead and hit apply and test and see what happens. So now we're sitting at 66 watts. So we're right there in the middle of our 60s 
and we're at 65 C for our temperature. So we're doing pretty good. I mean, we've lost a couple hundred megahertz, but I don't know if you're really gonna see that for the amount of power and heat that you're gonna be saving by knocking this thing down to 4.2. And keep in mind, this is still an overclock over the stock speed. We're still within the boost clock right now, and we're getting pretty excellent wattage. In fact, at 66 watts, this processor is rated at 65 watts stock. So we're below the stock wattage of the processor with a pretty good overclock at 4.2 gigahertz. So we're gonna go ahead and drop this down again. So now we're gonna be sitting at 1.09. In fact, you know what, I'm gonna go two down. So we're gonna go 1.0875 and we're gonna go ahead and hit apply and test. And at that point, so now we're sitting here in the low 60s, so we're at 64 watts with 66 C temperature. So right now, as you can see, we're right here at 64 watts. Now, like I was saying, this processor is rated at 65 watts, so we're below the factory wattage, and at the same time, we're sitting at 4.2 gigahertz, which is faster than the stock clock speed of 3.5. And it's right about in the middle of the boost clock. But keep in mind, this is an all core overclock, so it's gonna stick at 4.2 all the time. So we're gonna go ahead and drop our voltage down just a little bit more here. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna go two notches down to 1.075. So we're getting really low now. You think we can hit one volt? I don't know, we'll try. I'm going to go ahead and hit and apply and test and see where we go here. So right now we're at 62.8 watts, 62.7. Yeah, right, right, oh, 62.5. So right there at 62 watts and 63C for temperature. So as you can hear, I don't know if you can hear the ambient sound and my fans ramping up, but they're ramping up a lot less than they were when we started this test because it doesn't have a lot of temperature to deal with right now, especially at 62 watts. So once this test finishes, we'll see if we can take some more voltage off of this thing and make it even better. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and drop it down again. I'm gonna drop it down this time two notches to 1.0625. So gonna go ahead and hit apply and test and see if this stays stable. And it's doing pretty good. So we're sitting really close to one volt even and we're at 60 watts, 60 watts even and 61 at the temperature. So as you can see, the closer we get to one volt, the faster this wattage is dropping right here and the faster the temperature is dropping. But the system is still stable at 4.2 gigahertz. Okay, so it passed again. So we're gonna go ahead and drop this down again, two more notches to 1.05. So we're getting real close to one volt. Hopefully we can hit it. So we're gonna go ahead and hit apply and test. And now we're in the 50s now. We're at 58 watts and 61C for our temperature. And as you can see, my fans just ramped up and it dropped it down to 60C. So we're doing really good so far on temperature and wattage. So we're gonna go ahead and let the stress test finish and we'll move on and drop the voltage a little bit more. All right, so that one passed. We're gonna go ahead and knock it down a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and do two notches. So we're gonna go 1.0375. We're gonna hit apply and test and see where we're hitting. So we're sitting right now at 57 watts and 61. As my ramps, as my fans and everything ramp up, it goes down into 60s. So it's in the low, oh, 59 Celsius. So we're doing really good on temperature and 57 on wattage. So we're almost 10 watts under the 65 watts that the processor's rated for at the very beginning. So this overclock right here, you could probably do this on a stock cooler instead of the water cooling that I have right now. All right, so we're at 1.0375 and it passed. So we're gonna drop it down. I'm gonna start dropping it down one each time this time. So we're gonna go 1.0325. We're gonna go ahead and hit apply and test and see if it sticks. So we're at 56.5 watts at 60 C. And as my ramp slump, as my fans ramp up, we get down to 59, right about in the middle of 59. And we're sitting right at 56 watts, okay. So we're gonna go ahead and let this test go and we'll try to drop it down one more. So we're almost to one volt. Hopefully we can get it to one volt. If we can't, we're gonna be awfully close to one volt within a few hundred millivolts, obviously. So let's drop it down one more time and see if we can hit one volt. Okay, so now that we've down, we're gonna go ahead and drop it down one more time. So this is gonna put us at 1.025. We're gonna go ahead and hit apply and test. And look at that, we're right at 55 watts. So we have lost an entire 10, oh, it failed. 
Okay, so that's as far as it can go, 1.025 volts. So we didn't quite make our one volt, but we did do pretty good. So now that we've failed at that one, essentially all you do is you come up here, you could, if you want, decide, well, I think I wanna take it down to 4.1 gigahertz and see if you can keep going. And you can do that, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and leave mine at 4.2. So at 4.2, we're gonna knock it up to 1.03125. We're gonna hit apply and test just to make sure that that one's stable. And at that point, we've already tested it at this voltage, so we could just hit apply if we wanted to, but there's nothing hurting you to actually hit have it tested again. And then right here, we can see that we are at 55, right at 55 watts, we're bored, yeah, 56. And then we're at 59C for temperature. So it looks like we lost about 10 wattage from the factory rated wattage and our temperature is doing really good. I have no doubt that you could run a 4.2 gigahertz overclock on this process. Oh, it wasn't stable. Okay, so that's another good reason why you should test it because you could actually see a stable overclock in one test just to have it fail in the next one. So if something like that happens, then unfortunately you gotta crank it up a little bit more and then test it again and then see if it runs. So it should run this time. So as you can see, this is pretty trial and error. My numbers aren't necessarily gonna be the same as your numbers, but I do think that based on what we did, especially at the 4.2 gigahertz undervolt, that you could run that on a stock cooler. You wouldn't need to be water cooled like I am. But now I should probably add here why this works the way that it does. For people who have been into overclocking for a while, you know that when your overclock is a little unstable, the best way to make it stable is by adding just a little bit of V-core voltage. The reason this makes your overclock stable is because a processor is nothing more than millions of transistors constantly opening and closing. The higher the clock speed you run the processor at, the faster those transistors have to switch. Imagine it like this. Picture the transistors as being doors. Switching the transistors is essentially opening and closing the door. You can actually get to the point to where you're opening and closing the door so fast that the door's trying to open while it's still closing. When that happens, you get an unstable overclock. So by adding just a little bit more voltage, you're essentially slamming the doors just a little bit harder. Now, you might have one Ryzen 5 processor that can switch all day long at 1.1 volts, but another one that requires 1.3 volts in order to effectively switch. AMD tests these processors to see what kind of voltage the high average is that will get them the most reliable processors from multiple batches. And that's what the default voltage becomes. So even though a lot of these Ryzen 5s can switch just fine at 1.1 volts, because, because of those few that require 1.3 volts, they all have to run at 1.3 volts. So in many Ryzen 5s, you're really slamming the doors of those transistors harder than they have to, if we want to really belabor the analogy. What's even better though, is that when you can lower the temperature of the processor, even those Ryzen 5s that require 1.3 volts can probably run pretty stable at 1.1, at least because it's a cooler temperature. But unfortunately, it has to run at 1.3 volts because AMD is not gonna include a custom water cooling solution with every processor processor they sell. So instead, they just use a boost algorithm and variable V-core voltage to get the best of both worlds. And all we've done is lock the processor at its maximum boost speed and lowered the voltage until it became unstable. Then we turned it up just a notch and that's where the voltage in my specific processor is able to switch its transistors effectively at. Now, like I said, the voltage that my processor is running isn't necessarily going to be the same as the voltage your processor needs. And this has to do with a lot of different variables. For one, my processor is water-cooled, and that's going to give me an advantage because I'm able to keep it pretty cool. It also depends on your silicone quality. If you can get your processor to switch at a lower V-core than mine, then that just means your silicone quality is better than mine is. But if your processor needs a slightly higher V-core than mine does, then it means your silicone quality isn't quite as good as mine. So hopefully I explained that okay. But even if you're, we're using less power and we're running at a cooler temperature with the lower voltage, that doesn't mean anything if the processor doesn't perform like it did before. So what we're going to have to do is look at some benchmarks. 
Now the first game benchmark we're looking at is Counter-Strike 2. Just like last week, I have Counter-Strike set to 1080p with the graphics settings on medium in order to increase the processor usage. With the CPU at stock, we got an average FPS of 330.7. We also got a 1% low of 149.5 and a 0.1% low of 59.3. Once undervolting, we got an average FPS of 344.4, which is a 4.1% improvement. For our 1% low, we got a 159.4, which is a 6.4% improvement. Then when we take a look at our 0.1% low, we got a 76.9, giving us a 25.8% improvement in our frame timings. So just like last week with the Precision Boost Overdrive, we're definitely seeing a big improvement in our frame timings. But what differs from last week is we're actually seeing a pretty good improvement in our, in our average FPS as well. It looks like locking the CPU at its boost clock is definitely helping us. The next game we're looking at is Cyberpunk 2077. This game I also set to 1080p with a graphics setting on medium. I also enabled DLSS in hopes that it would increase the CPU usage. And just like last week, this game had the highest CPU usage of any of the games that I tested. With the CPU stock, we got an average FPS of 143 and a 1% low of 95. We also got a 0.1% low of 81.5. Once undervolting, we got an average FPS of 147.9. That gives us a 3.4% increase in our average frame rate. I also got a 1% low of 108.6, which gave us a 13.4% improvement. When we look at the 0.1% low, we got an 88.9, which is an 8.7% improvement from stock. So again, just like last week with Precision Boost Overdrive, we're really getting an increase in our frame timings. But just like the last game, Cyberpunk also saw a considerable increase in average FPS. Unlike Precision Boost Overdrive, which gave us an average FPS that was within margin of error. The next game we're looking at is Red Dead Redemption 2. Just like before, this was set to 1080p and the graphic settings were at the highest low setting. I also enabled DLSS to increase CPU usage. With the CPU at stock, we got an average FPS of 107.9 and a 1% low of 78.7. We also got a 0.1% low of 55.1. Once undervolting, we got an average FPS of 117.1, which is an 8.2% increase. We also got a 1% low of 86.9, which is a 9.9% increase. When we look at the 0.1% low, we got a 69.1, which is a 22.5% increase. Now, the undervolt on this game specifically ran way better than the Precision Boost Overdrive did. I mean, we still saw a 4.7% increase in average frame rate using Precision Boost Overdrive, but with the undervolt, we saw an 8.2% increase in average frame rate and a considerable boost in our frame timings, which was kind of lacking in Precision Boost Overdrive for this game. The next game we're looking at is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Just like before, this game was set to 1080p and the graphics settings were on medium. As before, I also enabled DLSS in order to increase CPU usage. With the CPU stock, we got an average FPS of 161.8 and a 1% low of 127.2. We also got a 0.1% low of 67.4. Once applying the undervolt, we got an average FPS of 162.8, which is only a 0.6% increase and well within the margin of error. We also got 128.7 on our 1% low, and that gave us an increase of 1.2%, but still within the margin of error. The disappointing part was that I got a 59.2 in the 0.1% low, which is actually a 13% loss from the stock CPU. So, this is really the only game that we really didn't see much performance gain with. But as you can see, aside from Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which pretty much ran the same, we got pretty good gains on all of our other benchmarks we did. So, not only are we using less power and producing less heat, but our games and other programs are actually running better. But now, 
With all overclocks, you have to go through a time of trial and error. You might find that certain games or certain programs simply don't run reliably. And if that happens, you'll have to tweak your settings a little bit more until you find something that works well. And this could take some time. Also, this undervolt was done entirely in Ryzen Master. I planned on including a section in this video to transfer these settings into the BIOS so that you could run an undervolt all the time. But Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that with the ASUS BIOS in my system here. Unfortunately, transferring the undervolt from Ryzen Master to the offset voltage value in the ASUS BIOS just turned out to be completely futile because the settings simply weren't transferable. It's going to be something I'm gonna have to play around with and maybe we'll do something in the future. Because of this though, you'll have to apply the undervolt every time you boot your computer up. But fortunately, Ryzen Master makes it pretty simple because it saves your profile settings and every time you launch the app, you don't have to go and hit reset and apply and all of this other things. You can just simply hit apply and there's really no reason to test it because you've already tested it. Also, Ryzen Master allows you to export and import your settings. So if you ever reload your system, you can always export the settings and back them up that then you can use them later with your new OS. Personally though, I'm really happy with the performance that we got from this undervolt. Like last week, we did get some performance gains, but nowhere near as much as we did today. And while last week using Precision Boost Overdrive is technically free, it increases your power usage quite a bit, which means you're going to cost you in the long run from an increased power usage. And of course, air conditioning that you're gonna have to use to keep your room cool with the increased temperature. What we did this week with our undervolt is not only free to do, but since you're using less power, the argument can be made that you're actually making money by gaming. Well, not really, but we can try that argument and see how it works. But with all that said, now that we've undervolted our CPU, it's time to undervolt our GPU too. If you wanna see that, then check out this video here where I did just that to my RTX 3060. You might not be able to make money gaming full time for your job, but your power bill is going to be lower and that's kind of making money. As always, you guys have a great day.